Welcome to the probability addition rule. Now that we understand the basics of probability and we know how to count, now we have to start figuring out probabilities of basic questions. Something of the form probability of A or B. right? The probability that either A or B happens or sometimes both. Uh, a simple example would be um, pick a card from a deck of cards what's the probability that it's either a face card or uh, a seven, right? So A is the event of getting a face card, B is the event of giving, getting a seven, and we want to figure out the probability that our card could be either of those things. Um, that would be an either or, right? Those two things are mutually exclusive. You can't be a face card and a seven. But I could have asked for you to pick one card and find the probability that it's either a face card or a heart. And now something could be both, right? It could be A or B or both. It could be A, a face card. It could be B, a heart. Or it could be some of the heart face cards. So those two things are not mutually exclusive. They overlap. Um, each comes with its own kind of formula to worry about. But really, the easiest thing is just to generalize and just make sure that you're counting systematically and not counting anything twice and not forgetting anything. But just remember that the or is the inclusive or, which means it could have the property of A or the property of B, or it could be both. OK, a compound event um, is any event where you have two or more simple events. So a compound event is is when you're more or less doing two things. So there's there's two things going on here. Okay, so you've got in, in this first example the prob uh, the probability of A or B. This is saying that the probability in one single experiment, either event A occurs or event B occurs or they both occur. Right. So it's back to that. Either it's a face card or it's a spade. Those are your two simple events, right? Being a face card or a spade. Um, and then we're looking for something that's one or either or both. This is hugely different than asking for probability of A and B, where in this case you're uh, running two trials and you want to get the probability of A on the first one and the probability of B on the second one, or another way that you can think of the probability of P and uh, sorry, of probability of A and B is still just running one trial, but then the thing has to have both um, characteristics. You know, so if we go back to our face cards, I know I keep going back and forth between hearts and spades, but let's just say face cards and hearts. So if we had a single trial, right? A single trial would be the card had to be a face card and a heart. So you just have jack, queen, uh, jack, queen, king of hearts. So there's three out of 52. Whereas with the or, it can be a face card or a heart. So you've got um, all 13 hearts. And then in your other three suits, you have uh, the three face cards in those three suits. And when you add those all together, you get 22 total good cards over 52, which is 11 over 26. That would be the probability of a face card or a heart. Face card and a heart is just those three right face cards that are hearts out of uh, 52, much, much smaller. Or you could have uh, a probability of two trials where the first card has to be a face card and then the second card has to be a heart. And that's a whole other story, right? So um, syntax matters and context matters. So you just have to make sure what kind of question they're asking for. Here's the um, compound event rule when we're dealing with just doing one event and then we're figuring out does it have the characteristic of A, the characteristic of B, or both. And we have to worry about when the things overlap or not. So this was the case of, let's say, face cards and hearts, 
right? And this was the situation, the first one I gave you, where we had face cards and, you know, sevens. So there's no overlap. Either you're a face card or you're a seven, you can't be both. But there is overlap here where you can be a face card and a heart, right? You've got the jack, queen, and king of hearts that are uh, in this area right here, the overlap. So when you have these or questions, you just have to make sure that you're not counting things twice or missing things. And that's what this silly formula is all about, that if we're trying to find the probability that something is a face card or a heart, we figure out the probability that it's a face card, we add the probability that it's a heart, and then we subtract the probability that it's both. So if we... Um, kind of look back at our previous picture. Uh, the probability that it's a face card is everything right in there. Uh, the probability that it's a heart is everything out in here. And then the probability that it's both is the green, the overlap, right? So when we add up all of the yellow and then add up all the blue. You see how we've added this little football shape twice? We ended up adding uh, that bit twice. And so we subtract it away so that now it's only been added once. So now everything's been counted once. So that formula is great and it works fine. Um, and you can absolutely use it and memorize it if you want. But really, it just it boils down to being systematic when you count. You know, count up all the face cards and then add in the hearts or count up all the hearts and then add in the other face cards that aren't hearts. So it, it either way works. Uh, I, I tend to like to just try and think it through and, and, and count them up systematically and not have to worry about yet again another formula to try and memorize. And that's what this intuitive addition rule is saying. It's just make sure that you add everything in a way that you count every possible outcome only once. You don't forget any and you don't count any of them twice. So we've kind of talked about it uh, informally. This slide just formalizes what these two pictures mean. It, it, it's, it's the difference between two things being mutually exclusive or what we call disjoint, and then two things you know, not being mutually exclusive or not being disjoint and overlapping. So the, the one on the right, this one, is mutually exclusive disjoint, right? They, they don't overlap. And total area equals one. Um, that's just the idea of with probability, all probabilities have to add up to one. So total area always has to add up to one. Now that doesn't mean that the two circles add up to one. It means the entire rectangle adds up to one. Because all of this stuff out here, right, represents all of the things that aren't A or B. So for instance, in uh, my previous example, if uh, A were face cards, right, and B were uh, hearts, don't you have all those other cards that are neither of those things, right? You have um, the diamonds, the uh, clubs, and uh, I'm horrible at this one, the spades, all of those cards that aren't face cards, and those would be all of that stuff out here in red. But all of those together will add up to all 52 cards, and there's your total area of 1. Okay? How about some more examples so we can figure out uh, you know, if they overlap or not? Um, how about uh, we'll get away from uh, cards and we'll roll two die. Roll two dice. Let A uh, be the event of getting uh, an even uh, number as your sum, right? the sum of the two dice. And then let B be uh, doubles. And so then we want to figure out the probability of A or B. Well, we could use the, the formula, right? We could figure out the probability of A, you know, how many even sums are there. Uh, you know, your sums are going to be uh, double ones, which gives you two, all the way up to double sixes, which gives you 12. And you have to figure out how many different ways each one can happen, and then add those all up. It turns out that um, 
the sum of dice is a, is a very nice uh, symmetrical uh, distribution where you start off with, uh, you can only get double twos once, and, uh, or sorry, double ones. To get a sum of two, you can only get it one way with double ones, and then to get a sum of two, gosh darn it, to get a sum of three, you can get that two times, and then uh, so on and so forth, up to uh, a sum of seven. Right, so this is uh, getting two, three, da, da, da. a sum of seven uh, happens six times, and then it comes back down to twelve, double sixes, can only happen once. If you add all those up, um, your even sums, you can get two once, four happens three times, six happens five times, eight is also five times, and then of course the pattern repeats, ten is three, twelve is one, so here's nine and nine, there's eighteen total ways to get an even sum, and there are thirty-six total ways to roll dice, because there's your two dashes, there's six choices for the first die, six choices for the second die, there's thirty-six. Now I know you're thinking, how can there be thirty-six? You know, So you're telling me that a roll of a three on this die and a four on this one is different than a four and a three? Well, it shouldn't, but it is. Um, it's just the easiest way to count up the way dice works. So if this makes your head hurt and you want to argue with this, then just say that one die is red and one die is white. And then now you can see that this is red, white, right? Red, white. So now you've got different color fours and different color threes. So they are, in fact, different. But uh, two, two, if you rearrange it, it's still one red two and one white two. So that's why doubles don't show up twice. So we figured out there's 18 ways, right, for A. So the probability of A is 18 out of 36, or 1 half, which should make sense, right? Evens and odds should be evenly distributed. So half of your rolls are evens, and half of your rolls are odds. OK, what about B? To get doubles, you only have double 2 through double 12. So that's 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Right? Sorry, double twos through double sixes. I'm really bad today. Two, three, four, five, six. That's only five types of doubles. So your probability of, uh, sorry, B is five out of 36. And so according to the formula, probability of A or B is uh, probability of A. I'm going to leave it as 18 over 36 make the math easier later, plus the probability of B, 5 over 36, right? minus the probability of uh, the overlap. Well, look at your overlap. Your doubles and evens, every single double is an even number. right? Double ones is 2, double twos is 4, so you're just going to subtract the overlap again and you're just going to get an answer of 1 half. So it's kind of a silly example, but you get the idea of how the formula works. You can use it, but you also can just count things up, right? I could have just counted up, okay, there's 18 out of 36 ways to do this, there's 5 out of 36 ways to do this, but realize that these are already counted in there, so my answer is really just 18 out of 36. Let's do one more example, go back to cards. So it's uh, not so silly. We'll let A be um, a face card. And we'll let B be uh, getting a diamond. And if you're not familiar with a deck of cards, I recommend you get familiar with it, because there's a lot of questions to deal with the deck of cards. So the probability of A is just how many face cards there are out of 52. Right, there's 52 total cards in the deck. And face cards, there's three, jack, queen, king, in each of the four suits. So three times uh, four, there's 12 of those. Probability of B is diamonds. Well, there's 13 out of 52, which, of course, reduces to 1 fourth, which makes sense because there's uh, four suits. But if we want the probability of A or B, Instead of fussing around with the formula and figuring out what kind of overlap they have, right? Because we know 
it uh, it should be 12 over 52 plus 13 over 52 minus their overlap, right? How many of the diamonds are face cards? And that's three of them, three out of 52. But if you just figure, all right, <clears throat> how many cards are diamonds? There's 13 of them. Now add in all the face cards that you haven't already counted, right? There's three more face cards in the other three suits. So there's nine more or 22 over 52 and of course if you do this math you get the exact same 22 over 52 so it works both ways just whichever way you're more comfortable with whichever kind of way is easiest for the given uh, question we've talked about complements before a and a complement must be disjoint because if you're something that makes up a then you can't be in the complement by um, definition if we were to draw a picture of our sample space, these rectangles that you see, they're supposed to represent our sample space. If this is A, A complement is not some circle over here. A complement is everything out here. Everything that's in the sample space that is not A. So for instance, if A um, were face cards, then these are all the non-face cards, right? If A were uh, diamonds, then those would be the other three suits. If A were just all of the aces, right, then these would be all the other cards besides the aces. You get the idea. Here are some rules about our complements. We've talked about these before. We know that the probability of the event plus the probability of its complement has to equal uh, 1. And again, if you draw the picture, you can see how that makes sense. Because if this is A, and the complement is everything outside of it, since all of that adds up to the entire sample space, then those two probabilities have to add up to 1. And these other two are just the same darn things, but just algebraically solved for a different, right? So instead of this, they just solve for the complement and move the other one to the other side. And here they just solve for P of A and move the complement over. And, and these two are the ones that we really use a lot because this reminds us that if we're trying to find the probability of something and we happen to know the probability of its complement, then we can just do one minus it. And vice versa, if we're trying to find the probability of a complement and we know the probability of it, we can do one minus it. So for instance, uh, if we know the probability of, let's say, um, A equals 0.3, then what does the probability of its complement have to equal? And hopefully you're thinking, well, it's got to be the, the other part of it, so 0.7. It really is just that simple. Here's their pretty picture of a complement or an event and its complement. I like mine better. That's it. 